Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through an example problem where I solve for the optimal consumption bundle when we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function. And this is actually example number two of these sorts of problems that I've done. I did a previous example that had pretty simple algebra, so the utility function was really simple. So this is just a little bit more complicated. We have to do a little bit more maths. All right, so the question is here. Henry only consumes milk and strawberries. Their utility is given by the utility function. U is equal to M to the power of four over six times S to the power of three over four. And in this function, M is equal to the amount of milk consumed. S is equal to the number of strawberries consumed. The price of milk, which I'll notate P subscript M, is equal to two and the price of strawberries p subscript s is equal to three henry's income i is equal to 2125 what is henry's optimal consumption of milk and strawberries so henry's utility is described by a type of utility function that we call a cobb douglas utility function and this actually means that we will have what is called an interior solution where Henry will buy positive amounts of both goods. And diagrammatically, it will look something like this. So the point of optimal consumption that will be at M star S star will be here, where the slope of our indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget constraint. This will put Henry on the highest indifference curve given their budget constraint. Now the slope of our indifference curve, I see, is equal to the negative of our marginal rate of substitution, which is MRS, which is actually equal to, well our MRS is equal to the ratio of our marginal utility. So the marginal utility of milk divided by the marginal utility of strawberries. So the negative of this ratio at the optimum is equal to the slope of the budget constraint, so budget constraint BC, which is equal to the negative of the price ratios, so the price of milk divided by the price of strawberries. Now this will all be correct when milk is on the horizontal axis and strawberries is on the vertical axis. Now I will say with this condition of optimality, because the negatives cancel out, the optimal point will be where that ratio of marginal utilities is equal to the price ratio. All right, to solve this though, I will need to find the budget constraint for Henry. So let's do that first. Now abstractly, the budget constraint will be equal to the price of milk, PM, times how much milk is consumed, M, plus the price of strawberries, PS, times how many strawberries are consumed, S. And this will be equal to Henry's income, I. So we get these values of the, of the prices and income from the question. So we can see from the question that the price of milk is two, the price of strawberries is three, and Henry's income is 2,125. All right, now the second thing I'm going to do is find our marginal rate of substitution. And to do that, I need to find our marginal utilities. So I'll start with the marginal utility of milk, which will be equal to the partial derivative of our utility function with respect to the variable M. Now I've taken the question away so I can have a little more space here. And I have kept that utility function up there on the right hand side, just for reference. When I take the partial derivative, I'm going to treat S to the power of three quarters like a constant and just take the derivative of the utility function with respect to M in the usual way. So the exponent four over six will come out to the front. This multiplies where we have m to the power of, it will be four over six minus one, which is equal to negative two over six. And we just leave s to the power of three quarters, just as is because we are treating it like a constant when we're taking the partial derivative. Now here, when I take the one away from the exponent on the m variable, it's equal to negative two over six because, well, I can write one as six over six, so we're going to take away four minus six is negative two and we leave the denominator as six and that's how we get to that m to the power of negative two over six. 
We can then find our marginal utility of strawberries. That will be equal to the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to the variable s. So I'm going to treat in this case m like a constant and just take the derivative of the function in the usual way with respect to s. So the three quarters will come out the front. We're going to leave alone m and then we take one off the exponent on s. So it will be s to the power of three quarters minus one which is negative a quarter. And again, just how we get to that s to the power of negative a quarter is where well, one could be rewritten as four over four and three minus four is negative one and we keep the denominator four as is. All right, well, our marginal rate of substitution then is the ratio of our marginal utilities. So substituting what we found in, we get four over six times m to the power of negative two over six times s to the power of three quarters divided by, well, three quarters times m to the power of four over six times s to the power of negative one quarter. All right, well, I'm going to deal first with this fraction of a fraction that I have at the front. So I've got four over six divided by three over four. And what I can do is I can turn this into a multiple by switching the places of the denominator and numerator from that denominator fraction. So I get four over six times four over three, and then we've got the rest of our stuff there. So m to the power of negative two over six times s to the power of three quarters divided by m to the power of four over six times s to the power of negative a quarter. So at the front then we have four times four, which is 16, divided by three times six, which is 18, and that multiplies the same stuff that we had before. Now we can simplify the 16 over 18. We can divide both the numerator and denominator by two, and we get eight over nine at the front. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just use some tricks in order to simplify the rest of this expression some more. Now the first trick or rule that I'm going to use is the rule that any term, let's say just some variable x, to the power of negative, let's say, y, is actually equal to one over x to the power of y. Likewise, if we have one over x to the power of negative y, this is equal to x to the power of y. Basically, we can just add a negative to the exponent when we switch a term from being on the denominator to the numerator or the numerator to the denominator. So applying this rule to our expression, I can move the variables that I have on the denominator to the numerator if I change the sign on their exponent. So we have then, well, eight over nine, and I'll just write the numerator stuff out. So m to the power of negative two over six times s to the power of three over four times, well, I put the m that's on the denominator up the top, m to the power of negative four over six. So I added a negative because I've brought it up from the denominator multiplied by s to the power of positive a quarter. So I added another negative because I'm bringing it up from the denominator. I'm changing it from the denominator to the numerator, but the exponent was already negative. Two negatives make a positive, And that's how we get that. Now, the second rule that I'm going to use is that if you have, say, x to the power of y times x to the power of z, this is equal to x to the power of y plus z. So if you have the same base multiplied together, raised to some powers, then in order to multiply them together, you add the exponents. With our equation then, our MRS at the moment is just a heap of terms multiplied together. But using this rule, I can join well, I can join the m's together, they're the same base. So I'm going to add their exponents. So I have m to the power of negative two over six plus negative four over six. So I get minus six over six and negative six over six is just equal to negative one. We can do the same thing with s. So I have s to the power of three quarters and then s to the power of one quarter. So I add the exponents three quarters plus one quarters is one, so I have s to the power of one. Now we can put m on the denominator to get rid of the negative in the exponent. And so we can rewrite all of this as eight over nine times s on m. So I'm just emitting the exponents to the power of one. Uh, it's superfluous at this point. 
All right, that's our marginal rate of substitution. I'll clear some stuff. As we said before, at the optimal bundle, this is equal to the price ratio PM over PS. Now I know I've taken the question away, but we can see from the budget constraint that the price of milk was two and the price of strawberries was three. So that's our price ratio. And what I'm going to do is just solve for either S or M. So I'm going to start by multiplying out nine and dividing both sides by eight. So we get some cancellations here and I get this condition that S over M is equal to 18 over 24. Now if I divide the numerator and denominator on the right hand side by six, I get, well, S over M is equal to three over four. If I multiply both sides by M, I find that S is equal to three quarters times M. And so this is our S star. And this condition tells us the ratio that we will consume our goods at, at the optimal point. And we found an expression for S in terms of M. You could also solve for an expression of M in terms of S. The point is that we want an expression that we can then substitute into our budget constraint. This reduces the number of unknown variables in the budget constraint to just one, and we can solve for the actual amount of strawberries and milk that Henry will consume. All right, so using our budget constraint then found at the beginning, we get 2m plus 3, s is equal to 2125, but s is equal to 3 quarters times m. So substituting in, we get 2m plus 3 times 3 over 4 times m is equal to 2125. So just multiplying those 3s together, 2m plus 9 over 4m is equal to 2125. 2m can be rewritten as 8m on 4, and this rewrites 2m so that it has 4 on the denom denominator. And now we can add both of these terms up. We get 17 over 4 times m is equal to 2125. Now, 4 times 2125 is equal to 8,500. So we get 17 times m is equal to 8,500. If we divide both sides by 17 here, we found that the optimal amount of milk is equal to 500. All right, so that's the optimal amount of milk for Henry. If we substitute m star is equal to 500 into either the budget constraint or to the condition we found before, we can find s star. I'm just going to put it in the budget constraint. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So I get two times, well, 500 plus 3s is equal to 2,125. So 1,000 plus 3s is equal to 2,125. Taking away 1,000 from both sides, we get 3s is equal to 1,125. So if you get your calculator out, or maybe you can do it in your head, we find that s star is equal to 375. Now visually on our diagram, it looks like this. We have m star is equal to 500, and s star is equal to 375. If we wanted to complete the diagram, we should also add our axis intercepts here of our budget constraint. So the horizontal axis intercept will be equal to the amount of milk Henry could purchase if they spent all their income on milk. So 2,125, that's how much income they have, divided by two, that's the price of milk. So that's 1,062.5. And the vertical axis intercept would be their income, so 2,125 divided by three, that's the price of strawberries, is equal to 708.3333. So that's it. We're finding the optimal consumption bundle when we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function. And that's it for this video. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. I hope that it helped. Thank you so much for watching my stuff. You can also visit me at www.econhelp.com.au where I have more resources to help you study economics. Hope you guys are doing well. See you next time.